All right, so those pictures coming out of Givers, man. Yeah. You aren't kidding when you sent these in. Cars underwater, whole streets flooded. You're right to ask, is this like a regular thing there? Sure. Are we always seeing Givers underwater? It's definitely not a normal Tuesday, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. Even for a place that sees its fair share of floods, this was way beyond typical. And yeah, that climate change question you asked, we got to talk about that. Right, because it makes you wonder. So we've got these two articles from France Info. Mm -hmm. One's a deep dive on Givers itself and then a shorter one that mentions another town hit by the same storms. But let's zero in on Givers first. And the first article really gets into the details. Yeah, and they're pretty intense. We are not talking, you know, a little rain shower here. We're talking 60 to 90 millimeters of rain in most areas. Yeah. Um, Hold on. For us Americans who think in inches, that's... So, right. Sorry. So over three and a half inches. In some spots, even more, almost four and a half. That much water that fast, it's like instant chaos, you know? No kidding. Yeah. So the Geary River obviously overflowed, but paint me a picture. What did that actually look like on the ground? Think like total havoc. River bursts its banks, streets are flooded, businesses completely swamped. They even had to evacuate a careful parking lot. Can you imagine? Wild. And how many people got hit by this? So 480 forced to evacuate and 261 needing emergency shelter. Suddenly, it's not just about soggy basements, it's people's lives totally upended. Man, that's awful. They'd... And it sounds like it all happened so fast. The article mentioned a huge emergency response. Totally, 270 firefighters plus volunteers from all over Red Cross, White Cross, everybody. And the photos from that Lion drone service, whoa. Forget just water, you're seeing debris everywhere. Cars tossed around like they're nothing. The sheer force of it. It's hard to even wrap your head around. And those drone photos, We'll link to those in the show notes so you can see for yourselves. And this wasn't even the only town hit, right? That other article about Rive d'Isdier, that's what really got me. Mm. Same storm system, but even oh. worse flooding there. Same river, actually. The gear flows through both. But yeah, worse might be an understatement. They're calling it a 100-year flood over in Rive d'Isdier. With 100-year... Okay, that's a whole other level. What made it so much more intense there? Well, for one thing, they got pounded with rain for like 30 36 hours straight, nonstop. Can you imagine? The ground is totally saturated, nowhere for the water to go. So the gear- It just turns into this raging river, right? Exactly, a raging torrent just sweeping through. And this is where, you know, that climate change question comes in. Because two towns, same river, both slammed with these insane floods. It's the pattern you see. Yeah. It's not just one-off events anymore. And we know a warmer atmosphere, it holds more moisture, kind of like a- Like a sponge? Yeah. yeah. A warm sponge soaks up way more water than a cold one, right? So warmer planet, more moisture in the air, these mega downpours, they're- They're not just going to stop, are they? Exactly. It's what we're going to see more and more of. Now, this one event in isolation, maybe not solely because of climate change, but it absolutely fits the trend, and that's what's worrying. Okay, so we're talking more than just the immediate danger here, right? Both these articles mention some serious infrastructure problems, too, like beyond just the flooding itself. Oh, absolutely. These floods, they had ripple effects all over. For example, the A47 motorway completely shut down. We're not talking about a quick detour here. They had to bring in huge pumps to clear the water. Wow. Talk about a traffic jam. And that's just the start. Business is closed, delivery is delayed, people can't get to work. The economic impact alone is huge. Right, and it wasn't just the motorway. It wasn't the train line between Lyon and Saint-Étienne down for days, too? Days, at least. Imagine that. The whole region's transportation network just gone. Supply chains messed up, commutes impossible. And then there's the long-term recovery to think about, too. That's not going to be quick or cheap. Which brings me back to that question you sent in. If these intense events are the new normal, what can people even do to get ready? Because this is feeling very real right now. Yeah, it's like all those what-if scenarios, suddenly they don't seem so far-fetched, you know? So where do you even start? What can people actually DO to be ready for something like this, especially if, like, floods aren't usually on your radar? That oh crap moment is exactly what we want to avoid, right? And honestly, a good place to start is just that classic emergency kit. The uh, food, water, batteries. Okay. That whole thing. Exactly. Food, water, first aid stuff, copies of important papers, all those basics. You know, in case you're stuck at home for a while. Oh, and a battery powered radio. That's a big one. Right. Because if the power is out, you're not. You're not scrolling your phone. Right. Exactly. So communication. I hadn't even thought of that. Like if your phone dies and there's no way to. Totally. Backup plan for communication is key. Mm -hmm. Portable phone charger. Make sure it's charged up. And honestly, a good old fashioned list of emergency numbers. Not everything needs to be digital. Seriously. Sometimes pen and paper is the most reliable. 
Oh, and this might seem basic, but agree on a meeting spot with family just in case you get separated. Smart. It's like you always hear, be prepared, but it's easy. Sort of let it slide. Okay. Yeah. When's the last time I checked the batteries in my flashlight? <laughs> Probably like the last time the power went out. Yeah. Which was not a natural disaster, thankfully. And that's the thing, right? Easy to forget when things are fine. But honestly, just that regular check-in, emergency supplies, does everyone in the house know what to do? Those little things, they make a huge difference. It's about peace of mind, for sure. Yeah. And it's not all on you as an individual either, right? Exactly. It's about community, too. Checking on your neighbors, especially folks who might need an extra hand. A hundred percent. That's huge, especially in a crisis. Those small acts of looking out for each other, that's what builds a resilient community. Man, this deep dive into the giver's floods, it really makes you think bigger picture. You know, it's not just about the water. It's about how interconnected we all are. And I don't know, realizing that being ready for anything, whether it's a flood, a storm, whatever, yeah, it's more important now than ever. You know, It really is. And I think maybe, just maybe, by doing these things, getting prepared, building that community, Maybe that's how we start to build a better future and a more resilient future for everybody. That's a great thought to end on. And speaking of being prepared, we've got tons of resources linked in the show notes. Everything from emergency kit checklists to tips on getting involved in your community. So check those out. And until next time, keep asking those curious questions. Keep diving deep with us.